This clip gives an overview of what is required to identify an optimum local and or global in univariate functions. So here's some notation, we use a function fx. We will uh, need its slope or the first derivative f prime x and we will need to consider its curvature, the second derivative f double prime x. So we will have to, in this discussion, distinguish whether our function lives on an open domain or a closed domain. The, in some sense, open domains are nicer and cleaner, and when you're dealing with a closed domain, there's some additional points you have to consider, and I will point them out. In some sense, everything starts with the search for stationarity points. That's invariably, this is what you will have to do if you find, want to find optima, minima or maxima in a function, find the stationarity points, i.e. the points where the slope is equal to zero. So if you found a stationarity point, these could be one of uh, three things, minima, maxima or saddle points, but at this stage you will have to add local minima, maxima or saddle points. Okay, we'll look at global issues later. So it will be a stationarity point will be a minimum if the second derivative is positive, maximum if the second derivative is negative at that point and a saddle point if the second derivative is equal to zero. So here just sketches of these situations and um, we're looking at stationarity points at these uh, particular points, let's call them x0, and what determines whether their minima, maxima, settle points are is the value of the second derivative at that point, okay, at the value x0. So x0 being a stationarity point is, in an open domain, a necessary condition for x0 being an optimum, minimum or maximum. Okay, so let's at this stage think about what extra consideration we need to make if we are dealing with a closed domain. In particular, what we will have to do is we will again have to look for stationary points as in an open domain, but we will also have to look for boundary points. And just a little sketch to illustrate why that is so. So we could have a function which has a, uh, a particular domain. Let's use some sort of dotted lines here. And the function may look like this. It has a stationarity point here, but it also has a boundary point, which isn't a stationary point, but yet is higher than that little local maximum on the left. So that is why we also have to look for boundary points. Next we're going to look at the question whether a particular optimum we found is more than local. Is it global? Does it mean is it really the maximum of the function over the entire domain? So let's start with a sketch. Here we have a function. Uh, could be a um, fourth order polynomial. There are two local maxima the little green dots here, uh, but clearly only one of them is a global maximum. So how do we go in, in this little picture? It's very easy to identify that, but things could be more complicated. How do we go about that? Well, in some sense, there is no really nice solution here. What you got to do is you got to check the function values for all your stationarity points, and then just check which one is larger. So in this case, there would be that point that has a larger function value, so that would be the global maximum. And of course, the similar considerations if you're looking for minima. So what if uh, you're working on a closed domain? So here you need to check the function values, as in the open domain, of all stationary points, and you need to look at all the domain endpoints or boundary points and you compare the function value for all of these and then decide where your maximum is to find the global maximum of that function on that particular closed domain. 
So this, in some sense, this is just some legwork you have to do. And if you have 20 of these stationarity points, if you had so many, then you have to check 20 of these. Usually it's much, much uh, less, of course. Sometimes, however, life is a little easier because sometimes you can establish that the sufficient conditions for a stationarity point also being a global optimum are being met. Okay, so we are here talking about the sufficient conditions. That means if you can establish these conditions, then you know that if you found a stationarity point, that has to be the global optimum. That's different to the condition that an optimum has to be a stationary point. That was a necessary condition, but that was not sufficient. So you could have many stationarity points, but clearly only one can be the global optimum. So let's have another sketch here. Here is uh, our potential, um, or firstly, it's a local maximum, and we don't know yet whether it's also global. Let's say that is at uh, argument value x zero. So now you realize above we checked the second derivative to see whether that was a local minimum or maximum. Okay. Now, however, we are looking at a characteristic of the entire function. So if the function fx is concave, that means the second derivative is smaller than zero, but not only at x naught, but on the entire domain of the function. Then we call the function concave. And if the function is concave, then we know that the one stationarity point which we have identified is also a global maximum. So sometimes you will be able to establish that. If you were looking for a minimum and checking whether a particular stationary point local minimum is also global, you would want to establish that the function is convex, so it has a positive second derivative across the entire domain of the function.